This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. Next up on the Mutual Audio Network, fiction from our future. The following audio drama is rated G for general audience. This is a presentation from Dream Realm Enterprises, where dreams are our reality. Go on then, Briscoe, my boy. Tell us all about this great adventure you and the fellas had. Oh, oh, it was so exciting. You just wouldn't believe it, Zimtron. There was a talking purple unicorn and everything. A talking purple unicorn? <laughs> Briscoe, you're so full of... GD! Be nice. Squeak, did anyone ever tell you that you're just like a broken phonograph? Oh, how original. Not to mention outdated. <clears throat> Please, you two. I'd really like to hear this. Go on, Briscoe. Tell us all about it. Well, as you know... Boffin, Popsicle, Kika, Chongo, and I recently hiked up into the Chocolate Chip Mountains. Oh, for the look. Look, would you just get on with it and use Boffin's flashback sequencer and just show us already? All this exposition is killing me. As much as I hate to agree with him, GD has a point, Frisco. Why not use the sequencer? Sure thing, Squeak. Just for you. Just for you, Squeak. Anything for you, Squeak. Dippity freaking do. Oh, my electronic gods. I'm so sick of you bots. Well, it's not like we're thrilled to be stuck here with you, GD. Yeah, I for one am sick of your constant complaining. Fine. Then I'm going down to the lagoon to see if I can spot any passing ships to signal. Surely someone's out there and can rescue me from this crazy island of misfit boars. Well, I hope they do, because you are boring me. Fine, and if I do get rescued, I'll finally get away from your self-righteous attitude, Squeak, which has been getting on my nerves for quite some time now. And what's more, if I ever do get rescued, I may not ever come back for any of you. In fact, if I ever see any of you again, it'll be too soon for me. Goodbye. Wow, do you think that really is the last we'll ever see of him? Only if we're lucky, Zimtron. Go on, Briscoe. Tell us your story, and tell it any way you like. Oh, thanks, Squeak. <clears throat> anyway, we had made it to the top of the Chocolate Chip Mountains, and that's when it happened. What happened, Briscoe, my boy? We met the great fairy wizard Earl who told us that we had to go on a great snipe hunt in order to pass through his forest. Oh, boy. It's time once again for Robots of the Company, episode number 409, The Trap, written by Jonathan Patrick Russell. We all, all finished. You sure this is going to work, Boff? I mean, you cannibalized his new body from everything from old bots to really old garbage cans. I have a feeling he's going to cop an attitude the second you reactivate him. In fact, I know he will. Maybe we were better off just leaving him turned off. No guts, no glory, Captain. And I think it looks quite nice. Even if I do say so myself. Now, just hit his activation button. You sure you don't want to take some time to think about this? Captain. Okay, okay. Let her rip, Boffin. And on your head be it. What in the twelve galaxies is happening to me? Oh, it's you. A handyman who can't. Huh? How, how do you feel, computer? How do you think I feel? I feel just the same... Hey, wait a minute. 
I, I feel different somehow. Weren't you doing some kind of repair work on me? Yes, computer, we were. Boffin here fixed you. Your old personality has been restored, not by my choice, mind you, and you're no longer a wristband. You're a bot, just like the rest of us. I... I am. You mean... I have a body now? Let me see! 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 Where's a freaking mirror? Sorry, his patient secretary still needs a bit of tweaking. Mirror! Just over here, mate. Here you go. Well, what do you think, computer? Pretty snazzy new body, huh? What have you done? It's hideous! I'm hideous! You've ruined me! Everyone's a critic. What do you mean, ruined you? You didn't have a body before, and now you've got one, just like you asked. As if I asked for this! A completely ugly and hideous body, yeah. Yeah, I'm Frankenstein's monster, for crying out loud. You've literally turned me into a freak show! Oh, it's not that bad. No, you're right, Captain. It's worse! Oh, just get over yourself. At least you have a body. That's more than can be said for poor Shinwipe and the others we've lost, who may be scattered in pieces across this planet. You know what? You're exactly right. I'm perfect. If you want to charge five bucks to see the freak! I've had about enough of this. Just turn him off, Boffin. Take his personality matrix back out of that body and put it back into my wristband. No, 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 no. What's that thought? I have reconsidered. I'll, I'll live with it. You sure? Oh, trust me, Captain. Anything is better than being permanently attached to your wrist. Fine. Then either get used to how you look, or consider being deactivated altogether. Can we seriously explore that option? Computer? Kidding. Don't have a rotten fig, Skip. Jeez, have a sense of humor. That's a... Uh, I actually have one. Oh, boy. I'm off to the club to have a nice stiff drink. But you don't drink, Captain. Well, I'm about to start. Oh, I don't believe this. So, I'm gonna be stuck like this forever. Well, unless we find you another body. Oh, really? Hang on a minute. Are you saying if one of the other bots loses his mind or something, I could be placed within his metal frame? Even... Even the captain, who has a shiny new body awarded him by the company just last year? Well, sure. Well, praise the company! <laughs> Oh, there you are. Not now, Mother. I have to find a friend of mine before he makes a mistake he'll soon regret. That sounds very noble, Squeak, dear. But we have unfinished business. Can we please talk about this? Oh! You have such impeccable timing, Mother. Besides, what's there to talk about? You lied. Again. I'm an entertainment droid. It's what we do. And it's not like you're so innocent. Mean. Well, if you ask me, it's a case of the pot calling the kettle black, dear girl. I mean, Squeak. That's not your real name, and you know it. At least, it's certainly not the name your father and I gave you. Look, you wouldn't understand. I had my reasons for taking on this name. And I'm sure they're completely justifiable. But they are. And, well, what about you? Ruby Red Smoke? It's a stage name, dear. Bots in my profession sometimes don them. I mean, I don't think RUX175 is all that catchy, now is it? You were never there for us, Mother. The first chance you got to run away with a robotic carnival, you took it. Oh, my electronic gods. Is this as the galaxy drifts, or what? Well, yes. Put it like that, my life can sometimes be a soap opera. And it all started with you, Mother. The day you left Daddy and I on our own. So you're still holding that against me? Well, forgive me for considering that a life-altering event, but yes! Of course I'm holding that against you! 
Look, your father and I simply weren't made for each other. He was AC and I'm DC. We were always incompatible. But I loved RS more than you could know. And I loved you and your brother. But I couldn't stay. Yes, I saw my opportunity in show business and I took it. And you know what? I don't regret that for one moment. I'm sure you don't. But I do have regrets, dear. Pull the other one, mother. I'm not joking. I do have regrets. I regret leaving you behind. I truly do. But I just thought a life on the road was not the best way to bring up my baby butts. So hate me if you want. But I did you a favor by leaving you with your father. Some favor? Did you have a bad life being raised by your father? Did he do such a terrible job? He was the best daddy bot any girl bot could ask for. Then I made the right choice for you. Because you're right. Huh? I'm a terrible mother. And I would have been. I knew that. I knew you needed something I could never give you. So go ahead and hate me if you need to. But at least I know I made the right choice when I decided which of us was the better parent to raise you. So go ahead. Go on hating me. And go on after your friend who's about to make a huge mistake. I'm sure he needs you. Don't abandon him like I abandoned you. Oh, mother. I mean it. Go on. We can continue this some other time. All right. I'm sorry, but I really do need to catch up with my friend. Of course, dear. You go on ahead. Right. like someone is having a bad day. Oh, it's you. Yeah, you could say that, Kika. Maybe I can help. Oh, unless you're volunteering some of your wiring to be burned to make a signal fire, then I don't think so. Ouch. That's a bit more of a commitment than I had in mind, GD. Yeah, I figured that. I'm just fed up with this. I've been with this crew for the better part of six years now, and I still don't get any respect. So I've had it. I'm done. Adios, amigos? Exactly. Except for the amigos part. I don't think any of them could be called friends. I bet you're wrong about that. Oh, yeah? Well, show me one of them who really gives a damn about me. I mean, I walked out of there for good. Well, I don't see anyone chasing after me. I think you may have spoken too soon, friend. GD, wait! Squeak! I, uh... What do you want? I, um, just wanted to apologize. Apologize? You? But you've never apologized for anything before. At least not to, to me. I know. And I'm sorry for both things. I mean, I'm sorry for never apologizing before. And I'm sorry for shouting at you in the club. I was being a bit... I mean, I was being a bit unfair. Well, maybe I was, too. Is that an apology coming from you? Well, I... Uh, it's okay. I won't make you say it. Uh, uh, I'm really sorry, Squeak. I guess I've been a bit hard on you over the years. I'm really not the one you need to apologize to, GD. You've been pretty hard on Briscoe, you know. Well, I suppose that's true. The little guy's all right, I guess. He just gets on my nerves sometimes. Briscoe gets on everybody's nerves. Why do you think Butch allowed him and the others to go off on that snipe hunt? Stupid bots. Didn't they know it was just a wild goose chase? Hey, did someone say goose? Where do you see goose? I hate goose. The plural of goose is geese, Kika. Oh, really? Wow. I was way off on that one. So... If the plural of goose is geese, is the plural of moose meese? I don't think so. Sorry. That's okay. I'm interrupting you two, aren't I? Well, to be honest, sort of. Sorry. I just hate to be left out. I have abandonment issues. <laughs> no kidding. No, really. I do. Oh, wait. You meant... Gotcha. I really gotta learn the concept of sarcasm. It would help. Sorry. You guys just continue with what you were talking about. I'll shut up now. It's okay, Kika. Yeah, I think we're probably done here anyway. Are we? Well, blah.
GD, are you still going to leave? There doesn't seem to be much reason to stay. Oh. I see. Wait, I didn't mean... We'll see you around, GD. Or not, I guess. Hey, aren't you going to go after her? What would be the point, Geek? Look, I'm no expert, but I'd say that fembot actually likes you. Get out of town. Can't really do that, G-Man. No town to get out of. No, that's not what I meant. Look, just, just never mind. Oh, sorry. That was that whole sarcasm thing again, huh? Well, yeah. Darn. I gotta get Boffin to look at my positronic net again. I really think my reasoning circuits must need an upgrade. Could be, Geek. You never know. Look, I, I gotta run. It's been, uh, nice talking to you. <laughs> oh, I get it! That was that sarcasm again, huh? <laughs> You're a real card, GD. <laughs> Whatever you say, Geek. Silly bot. Hey there, Cap. How's it going? Look, computer, no offense, but I came in here to get away from you and your constant rantings. If you want to complain about your body, I suggest you go back and tell Boffin all about it. Hey, Cap, don't worry about it. I just wanted to come and apologize. Huh? Really? Oh, you bet. Look, I say we bury the hatchet. Let bygones be bygones. I mean, hey, we have a history together. We're like, we're like brothers. Uh, of a sort. Uh, yeah. Whatever you say. No, seriously. I mean it. You did the best you could with my new body, and I can't really hold a grudge. Not against you, anyway. I'm... We're comrades. We're buds. We are? Sure, of course we are. And I want to show you my deepest gratitude for all you've ever done for me, Captain. Uh, you do? In the worst way, sir. I suggest we do something that will solidify our newfound understanding. Something concrete. You don't say. Well, well, that's very kind of you. Oh, not at all, sir. What say we get together later and just, I don't know, hang out. Just you and me, buddy. Well, I don't know, computer. I, uh... Oh, please. Please, I, I truly want to start over with you, Captain, and show you just how much respect I truly have for you. What do you say? Please? Well, I suppose it couldn't hurt. Well, not much, anyway. Huh? I, I, I mean, you're, you're, you're absolutely right, Captain. It won't hurt a bit. In fact, it'll be really quick. Huh? What? Just meet me in the forest near the crash site in, say, half an hour. Well, uh, well I, uh... We'll have one hell of a time. I, I might have to think about... That's the spirit. I can't wait. Well, oh, okay then, I guess. Uh, neither can I. Great! You won't regret it. See you then, Captain. Uh, yeah, sure. Whatever you say, computer. And by this time tonight, there'll be a new sheriff in town. <laughs> Down. I don't believe it. I've actually managed to signal a ship and they're coming this way. I can get off this crummy island and explore the rest of the planet. I'm no longer a castaway. So this is it, huh? You're actually leaving. Squeak. You signaled your ship and you're just going then? Look, Squeak. All good things come to an end. And this hasn't even been a good thing. Doesn't mean it can't be. Look, Squeak. We've been through a lot. We've survived the ship crashing fought armed space weevils together, been crushed to a singularity in the heart of a black hole together. Heck, we've even baked a cake together. Though I'd still deny that one if you ever squealed about it to the others. What's your point, GD? Through all that, we've never once gotten along. We've been at odds with each other since the day you walked onto the Titan One pretending to be someone else. You are the only one who even knows my real name. Apart from my mother, that is. Squeak, I... Just use it. 
Just once. Oh, come on. Please. <sighs> okay. Juicy. <laughs> See? When you say it, I can't help but laugh. Well, it's kind of a funny name to begin with, you know. Yes, but hearing it coming from your speaker system really cracks me up. Look, my ride's nearly here. I really gotta go squeak. You don't, you know. Look, if I don't get on that boat, I'll regret it. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon and for the rest of my life. What the hell are you talking about, GD? This thing between you and me, it just wasn't meant to happen. We come from different worlds, Squeak. We're like oil and water. We don't mix. It's impossible. Besides, Excelsior's back, and I wouldn't dream of coming between the two of you. Or his new missile defense system. But I don't even know who you really are. You can't leave yet. I need to follow this through. I need to know you. Some mysteries are better left unsolved. It would kill you to know the truth. Trust me on this. You know, if I hadn't met Excelsior first, or if he hadn't come back, or if, if... Don't even go there. It's just not worth it. But I need to say it. No, you don't. I don't need to hear it, and you couldn't live with yourself if you said it. Jeezy. This is goodbye, Squeak. We both know it needs to be this way. Okay, fair enough. But I will never forget you. None of us will. As much as you tried to come across as a selfish ass, you actually came through for us all. More than once. You're a hero, GD. Just stop that kind of talk. And just remember me as the jerk I want you all to remember me being. But I know the truth. You're really a nice bot. And if you ever breathe a word of that to anybody, I'll sue the pants off you. You'd enjoy that, wouldn't you? No, but you would. <laughs> You always know how to make me laugh. Then always think of me and laugh. No, wait, on second thought, think of me and frown. No, that's not right either. Um, uh, never mind. I gotta go. But GD, will I ever see you again? Only in your dreams, baby. I'm ready. Let's get off this stinking island. GD! I think I love you, you robotic fool. How's it going, Squeak? He's gone, Kika. Who's that? GD. He signaled a ship, and now he's gone. I don't think he'll be coming back. Bummer. How about a game of hopscotch? <laughs> oh, Kika. You know you can't play hopscotch. I can't? No, silly. You don't have any legs. You just hover above the ground. Oh, yeah. You're right about that. Oh, well. I spy? <laughs> oh, Kika. You always know how to cheer me up. Hey, and that's my job. I'm Kika the ex-company messenger bot, now known as Cheerer Upper Bot. Besides, I'm bored. Talk to me. Please talk to me. I'll give you candy. <laughs> Computer? Oh, damn it, what are you doing there? You were supposed to be standing here. Oh. Uh, computer? Did you set a trap for me? Well, what does it look like? May I ask why you set a trap for me? Um, because? That's not much of a reason. Look, if you have a problem with me, I suggest you come out with it. Yeah, 
I do have a problem with you, Captain. I want your body! What? Oh, God, not like that. Do you bots think of nothing else? I need a nice, shiny, new body that Boffin can put my amazingly intelligent brain within. This one sucks! <sighs> I see. All right, look, computer. This just isn't gonna work. What isn't? If you're gonna try to kill me every time I turn around, then we're gonna have a serious problem. I need to know I can trust you if you're still gonna be a part of my crew. Wait a minute, you still want me to be a part of your crew? Well, of course I do. You're a valuable member of my crew. You're the computer, the only brains of this operation. Boffin is brilliant, but he's no good in a crisis. And then there's that self-esteem issue of his. I need you if I'm gonna get us off this planet. Gee, uh, I, I didn't know I was so important to you, Captain. What? Of course you are. I need you if I'm ever gonna salvage what's left of the Titan One and get us off this rock. I never thought of it like that. Then can we come to some sort of arrangement? A truce. A truce? What sort of arrangement? You stop trying to kill me to get my body. And I'll see to it that the first available shiny new body goes to you. You'll have first dibs. Uh, that seems fairly reasonable. And respect. I demand a lot more respect out of this crew from now on. You gotta guarantee me that. Hey, you have a physical form now. How can they not respect you? Uh, you certainly have a point there. Still, uh, with a body like mine, uh, you're sure? I'll make it mandatory. I'll give the order myself that every bot on Bob has to treat you with the utmost respect from this point forward, no matter what. You have my word, computer. Okay. Have a deal, Captain. I'll postpone trying to kill you until after we get off this planet. That sounds very reasonable. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey! Wait a minute! You have been listening to Robots of the Company, episode number 409, The Trap, written by Jonathan Patrick Russell, which starred in order of appearance, Jeff Niles as Zimtron, Kyle Boers as Briscoe, Ed Lee Hirschman as GD, Sally Wiggett as Squeak, Shane Harris as Boffin, Joe Thomas as Putch, Steve Anderson as The Computer, Cookie Coletti as Ruby Red Smoke, and Danny Cutler as Kika. The Robots of the Company theme tune was composed and performed by Daryl Looney. The incidental music was provided by Kevin McLeod, with additional material provided by Stevie K. Farnaby. The associate producer was Vince Staden. The post-production editor was Jeff Niles. The sound designer, script editor, executive producer, and director was none other than Jonathan Patrick Russell. The series Robots of the Company was created by Jonathan Patrick Russell, and the copyright is held by Dream Realm Enterprises. Any rebroadcast or reproduction of this program without the expressed written permission of Dream Room Enterprises is strictly prohibited. We interrupt our regularly scheduled credits to bring you this update. We now come to you from DreamRealmSite.com. So join us there on the web from now on. That is all. Now back to your regularly scheduled credits. Take it away, me. We don't really expect you to email us at darkbuilding1 at yahoo.com. Nope, we have no expectations whatsoever. No robots were trapped during the making of this audiogram. Join us next time as things become particularly hairy for the robots of the company in an episode we like to call Mutiny on the Botnik. Until then, this is the Creditor, and don't you wish you had my job? This has been a production of Dream Realm Enterprises. Copyright 2008. All rights reserved. Today, Americans are afraid of other Americans. They don't have to be. Some Americans hate other Americans, and they shouldn't. Americans are shouting at each other, and it's time to stop. Norman Corwin offers a quiet, informal conversation that reminds us all of how much we have in common. It's called Between Americans, and it's a fascinating banquet of food for thought from the grand master of American radio theater. It's his last message to the country he loved.
You can hear the podcast on Monday, February 20th on the Mutual Audio Network's Monday Matinee. Are you tired of the lies, the accusations, and the closed minds? It's time for us to stand on our common ground as we face the future. Listen to this very special podcast and talk about it between Americans. Monday, February 20th on the Mutual Audio Network. <music>